Good afternoon and welcome to AgriFood Conversations brought to you by iSelect Fund, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. My name is Tom Bunn, a principal on the iSelect Fund Ventures team, and I'm excited to welcome you all to our discussion today. AgriFood Conversations is all about driving innovation in agriculture. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, and this month's theme is AI and machine learning in ag. On today's call, we are joined by Okan Alper, founder of Erla Digital Agriculture. Erla Digital Ag is working to revolutionize the controlled environment vertical farming industry by digitizing agriculture and incorporating biology, genetics, computer sciences, and electronics in the process. Each of you knows companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We've invited you to this webinar because you are some of the smartest, most talented people in Erla's market. You are potential customers for their products and services. You've built a similar company, or you have unique expertise and understand the challenges and, and opportunities specific and unique to Erla. A few process comments before we start. We are not soliciting investment. This presentation is to provide information to help Erla Digital Ag find customers, mentors, and other strategic relationships that can help them grow their business. Secondly, you can use the Q&A box to ask a question at any time, and we will answer as many questions as time allows at the end of the presentation. Finally, this webinar is being recorded and will be available for replay. So with that, I am pleased to introduce Okan Alper, founder of Erla Digital Agriculture. Thanks for joining us, Okan. Uh, thanks for the invite, Tom. Uh, I will just like, quickly start since we have uh, limited time. Um, just to give you an idea about what we are doing, I want to start with our history a bit. Uh, so we started as a typical vertical farming company. Basically, we wanted to uh, develop technologies and like uh, grow leafy greens and quickly realized that that wasn't the right approach for us. We kind of like took a step back and started talking with large enterprise companies, um, uh, worldwide companies. And uh, as we talked to these guys, I mean, like we have seen over and over that they have like serious issues with their um, supply chain, especially when it comes to natural ingredients. Uh, like these guys, I mean, they have been investing like billions of dollars into their manufacturing processes, automation systems and everything, but their input is coming from traditional farmers who are constantly hit by things like uh, climate shocks, like logistic shocks, price increase in oil and like uh, pests and diseases and everything. And um, the number one issue that these companies were having was consistency. I mean, consistency of quality was one thing. And just to give you an example, one of the customers that we were talking with, uh, they were co complaining about the quality of fruits for ice cream. Basically, they were saying at the end of every summer, they have to change their formula for ice cream because taste of fruit is changing every summer. Uh, and the uh, another one was like complaining about availability, like consistency and availability. Like she was a fragrance designer in Canada. She was saying like she was literally bagging a um, vanilla producer in Madagascar to get like a few kilos of uh, vanilla. And again, quality is another issue. So after hearing these many disaster stories, we, uh, we decided to like produce and sell natural ingredients for these uh, enterprise manufacturers. And we are developing uh, the necessary technologies and also doing biological, biological research to produce plants with increased quality and like consistent uh, yield and year round supply. That's our uh, goal right now. Uh, we are a small company, so we need to have initial focus. I mean, this market is a huge market. We are talking about the $400 billion market, uh, but our initial focus is like for a f uh, on a few plants. The first one is saffron. I mean, by the way, these plants are like plants that are hard to grow. They are usually endemic. They are usually going extinct. The first one is saffron. Uh, I'm sure you all know it's like a $2,500 per kilo uh, product. Uh, the market size is around 1 billion. Uh, it's mainly grown in Iran. As far as I know, like 90 plus percent of uh, produce is coming from Iran, which has like uh, trade restrictions all around the world. And it's again, constantly hit by um, climate shocks like uh, excessive rain in like um, the Khorasan region in Iran or uh, Kashmir in India and all that. And we are talking with uh, Kutash McCormick there. We have signed an LOI with them and uh, we are, they are waiting for us and we will be developing samples for them. Or we are also talking with Red Ruby Norway there, which is like one of the biggest producers of um, saffron and like they are waiting for a sample. We are about to sign an R&D deal with them. The other product that we are focusing on is called Salep. It's a special type of um, plant that is popular in this region. It's used in ice creams and like hot beverages. Uh, it's again like a type of orchid which is going extinct, it's endemic, it's illegal to collect, illegal to export, and the potential market is around like $100 million. We are talking with Unilever, Modo, and like Dr. Utker there, 
Uh, we developed the sample for Unilever, shared the results. We uh, delivered a, a sample to them for ice cream production, and we, uh, they like the sample. We are talking about procurement right now. We also sent the sample to uh, Mado and Dr. Edgar there. Uh, the next one is vanilla. Uh, I'm sure you know, like vanilla is about like $750 per kilo. Uh, it's a $3 billion market and it's very hard to uh, find vanilla. It's like grown in like tropical regions and constantly hit by uh, hurricanes and stuff like that. And McCormick, as far as I know, is the biggest buyer of vanilla uh, in the world. We are also talking with them, but it's, it takes more time to grow vanilla. So it's our, in our second phase of research. Another product that we are looking at is like stevia. And we are talking with Martin, Martin Barr for that. Martin Bar is like, as far as I know, the biggest um, herbal tea producer in the world. They own like 60% of the market and their revenues are on like 500 million euros. So we have signed an LOI with them. We also like sent an R&D invoice, got our payment. We are talking about the second, uh, uh, second R&D phase with them. And we also uh, do, uh, grown, we have grown like Edelweiss here in our labs. And Edelweiss is like an endemic plant that grows in the Alps. It's the national flower of Austria and Germany, as far as I know. And uh, we are, I mean, it's used in co uh, cosmetics. Again, it's endemic, it's like going extinct. It's like the same pattern as you can see. And we are talking with a company called Odaste in uh, Los Angeles. So for all of these, like saffron, as far as I know, we are probably like the first ones to do this at scale uh, in a closed environment. Salep, there's no one who has done this before. We are the first. And otherwise, as far as I know, we are the first one. So we have been like, kind of like spearheading these um, as far as I know. And if you look at our team, I mean, like from the day I started um, this company, my main goal was to like have a multidisciplinary approach here. And like the team is uh, like that. I'm, I'm a software engineer by training. I have worked at Yahoo. I was the technical architect for Yahoo.com and MyYahoo.com, which were combined making about $1.3 billion a year when I was there. After that, I came back to Turkey and formed an outsourcing company and developed software for companies like Shazam, Google, and Apple. And I have been with this company for the last three and a half years. Um, on the science side, we have our uh, chief scientist, like Dr. Anne Ferry, who is like a post, uh, PhD and postdoc from Cornell in molecular biology. We have Ari as our director of strategy from Duke again. And like we have our like biologists and like software engineer who have been doing like world class stuff with us. And also our angel investors are like, uh, like, I mean, we are kind of like proud to have these guys. I mean, they are all prominent guys in their areas. I mean, as I said, the main idea here is to have a, a multidisciplinary team who can take us further. And uh, I will just go into technology a little bit more since this is about like machine learning and uh, AI. So we have like a three phase approach. The first one is like, we need to find the best propagation material. I will go into the details of that, but all the plants that we are looking at, they're endemic, as I said, and they don't grow from seeds. So we have to find the best material for that. The second phase is uh, mostly like software and like molecular biology and biology. Uh, where we do our R&D to figure out how to grow that plant. And the third phase is figuring, figuring out like autom automation systems and mechatronic systems to grow these plants at scale. So as I said, I will dive into the details of this, but this is the high level approach. And so on the, um, I mean, I will just go over this slide really quickly. We have grown over like 80 plus varieties of plants so far, like from turmeric to ginger, patchouli, like different kind of like leafy greens, tomatoes, strawberries, anything you can think of. And with every plant that we have looked at so far, we have uh, increased yield substantially and also the quality of that plant substantially. Just to give you a nice idea, as I was saying, we started with lettuce, with leafy greens, and with lettuce, uh, we increased vitamin C levels by 10 times and like yield by 26 times. Same with stevia, we increased yield by six times, brevet amount by two times. As I said, every plant we looked at, uh, we have improved that substantially so far. And uh, on the biology side, I will dive into the details a little bit more and uh, I, will, yeah, I will be happy to take questions there uh, later on in the presentation. So on the biology side, there are two things that we are doing. The first part is like figure, figuring out the best digital recipe and that starts with um, coming up with the biosynthesis pathway. Basically like how does this plant work? What are the chemical reactions? Uh, like what, which enzymes, what, what are the key en enzymes and like uh, genes that are involved? What are the inputs and outputs? So, we are trying to come up with this pathway so we can optimize it further. And this is not available for many of the plants. I mean, like you are looking at different plants and like trying to merge them to come up with the um, pathway for your particular plant and the metabolite. And uh, we are like, I mean, so far we have been doing this manually with our biologists, but we are devising algorithms to do this with the machine learning. Basically given a plant and a metabolite, what is, how does that work is like what we are trying to figure out. The second part is cultivation parameters. Basically, I mean, like for leafy greens, again, I mean, they're pretty trivial. I mean, like you just do an NFT or deep water culture or even uh, drip irrigation, they work. 
But we tried NFT with lettuce, for example, and like uh, with Salep, I'm sorry, like the special orchid that we are working on. We tried NFT, they all died. And like after that, we tried aeroponics, they all died. So we had to do about 40 experiments to figure out what is the best cultivation medium there, how do we uh, irrigate the system and all that. The next phase is uh, figuring out environmental parameters, basically looking at the biosynth pathway. We are trying to understand what are the critical parameters and we design experiments around that, controlled experiments around that. And at the end of every experiment, we are sending our uh, samples to labs for, uh, test, for testing the metabolite content. And with that, we go to the next phase and next phase. And after a few iterations, we have the digital recipe ready. And again, like uh, our biologists have been doing this manually, but we are devising algorithms to do this with uh, machine learning so we can accelerate this process a lot faster. And last but not the least, stress factors are like the most important things for plants. I mean, usually whatever is valuable for us, plants are pro producing that to protect themselves from something. Like it might be UV light or some kind of an insect or like a drought or something like that. So if you understand how that plant works and figure out the stress factors, you can increase the metabolite content subst substantially by introducing stress factors. Like with lettuce, for example, what we did was at the end of the day, we applied like blue light for 30 minutes, like high blue light for 30 minutes and that increased the vitamin C levels substantially. With uh, stevia, we increased like far red, uh, like spect light uh, uh, more than regular and that increased the rebate amount. With cirrhosis, you introduce like water drought or like UV light and uh, like these kind of like stress factors are like improving your plant metabolite content substantially, as I said. So that's the first part, I mean, where you figure out the digital recipe. And the second part is uh, optimizing the propagation material. Basically, you, like all these plants that I'm talking about, you don't have the seeds, as I said, and you get either tubers or corms or like uh, root cuttings, and they are all coming with diseases and issues and pests. Like, I mean, we have not got, I've received any like high quality material there. So the first part is to clean those materials, get rid of like disease and like uh, pests. And after that, depending on the plant, you either do selective breeding or cross breeding. Like with saffron, for example, it's a sterile plant and uh, it like grows with corms. So you do selective breeding, but others you do select, uh, cross breeding. And again, we are trying to introduce machine learning algorithms there to like accelerate this process. But at the end of these two um, type of works, we have the best digital recipe and best propagation material. And that is like, um, constructing uh, like that is giving us like substantial IP basically like whoever wants to get into that market they need to spend at least a year to come to where we are uh, even more than a year depending on where we are of course because I mean you have to do multiple iterations and you cannot speed that with money or with um, like hardware or anything you have to do this like one after another and once you figure out the biology part the second part is data uh, if you look at any agriculture company for example I mean like they're they're all talking about like putting sensors to like figure out like irrigation uh, methods or like fertilizer amount that they want to use, temperature, humidity, that kind of stuff. But we want to take this to a different level where we uh, build a data warehouse with things like plant metab metabolite databases like uh, Chebby or like PopCam or Keg. We want to introduce like seed breeding databases there like cotton, cotton gen, citrus and like pulse and also CRISPR databases along with our controlled experiment data, like both our environmental parameters, stress factors, and the results of that that are coming from the labs. And of course we want to use plant images and like sensor data on top of that. So once we have the data set, what we are doing is to introduce different type of applications. Like one of them is of course, like remote management system, for example. I mean, we have a cloud-based system that can like manage anything remotely. Basically you upload your parameters to cloud and like it propagates them to these data centers. It's kind of like the data center approach of Yahoo. Uh, we have like a real time monitoring and alerting system. Like if something goes wrong, like system is alerting like the uh, necessary person uh, in real time. And also we are doing, we are approaching machine learning in a different way. I mean, like when people talk about AI or machine learning, they think this, this magical being where like it solves everything for you, but it's all about training. I mean, you need to have enough data to train the system. So since we don't have enough data, what we did was to kind of like reverse the problem. Basically, we are training the system uh, to understand what is normal. Uh, and once you understand that if you deviate from normal, if something is wrong, uh, we kind of like trigger an alert to a biologist where they can class classify that problem going forward. So the system keeps learning over time. And also, um, so with that, I mean, like you have animal detection to prevent any issues before it happens. And on top of that, as I said, I mean, you, you want to have like um, breeding databases uh, to optimize breeding, like uh, databases to optimize control experiments and all that. And um, uh, yeah, I mean, like 
I have like two more slides. I mean, we have limited time, so I'm kind of like going fast here. So but on top of like biology and the software side, we are also developing the mechatronic side and the automatic automation side, like what kind of irrigation systems do you have? How do you handle HVAC systems with a cost efficient mechanism? And like, uh, like what are the, as I said, like sensor networks and like, how do you automate the whole system? What is the robotics approach? Basically, I mean, like we want to solve the whole problem for that. And um, I will skip this slide. The other thing that I want to talk about, the last thing that I want to talk about is the unit economics. I mean, as, I mean, I have been like in this business for about like four years. And I think the most important issue in agriculture is economics. I mean, like you have like people are talking about all technology and like how cool things are. But the main question is, can you produce something at scale with a feasible approach? That's the main question that we are trying to solve. And if you don't do it in a feasible way, nobody buys it from you. It doesn't matter how good the product is. It doesn't matter how sustainable it is. At the end of the day, your unit economics should work. Then for the products that we are looking at, uh, the initial products that we are looking at, the unit economics is very promising. I mean, with Safran and Salep, both of them, we have about like two year payback periods. I can go into the details later, but that's the basic idea. I mean, like that was what we are uh, looking at mainly. And the last thing that I want to talk about is our business model. So for high value products, we want to grow uh, these plants ourselves in an own and operated uh, model. Basically like we will, um, put to capex for the factory and like we will uh, develop the product and like we will sell it to the customers but that's not very scalable because that's very capital heavy so to solve that problem we are we have come up with like a partner network approach which is more like contract farming basically the idea is you go to a partner and they put in the money and you put in the technology basically i mean they're financing the factory for you and they are handling the operations day-to-day -day operations and we are giving them all the propagation materials or all our recipes and our technology and we do like real-time monitoring for them. We work with them. And at the end of the day, we buy the product from them and we sell it to our customers. That's the basic idea. So this gives us like exponential growth over time. I mean, like we want to grow with these and we already have one customer that we are talking with. We will be building a factory with them uh, next year uh, without any capital on our side. So that's about it. I mean, thanks for listening and I'll be happy to take questions. Thanks, Okan. Uh, to those in attendance, a couple ways to ask questions. You can go down to the bottom of your Zoom app and uh, type in a question in the Q&A uh, icon down there, or you can raise your hand and I can unmute you and you can ask Okan a question directly. Um, but Okan, I guess to get started, can you give us a sense of what scale will look like this year um, in terms of uh, either kilograms or, mm -hmm. or uh, production uh, otherwise? Sure. Um, so the first, uh, the two, two, the first two uh, products that we are focusing on are like saffron and like sale, as I was saying. So we will start with those immediately. And like as I said, we signed a deal with one of the customers already. And we are about to sign it. I mean, like we agreed on the terms. We are about to sign the deal. So for that, I mean, we will be doing a few kilos initially. I mean, like the idea is uh, to get the propagation material from different sources and like produce them and like send them for testing. And as soon as they like it, we will build a thousand square meter. Uh, factory which will be producing about like 15 kilos a month so that's the idea with Salib, uh we will produce about like 10 kilos uh, initially and like we will grow that I mean like it's uh, that is where we are at I mean we are we have done our proof of concept and like did the initial production and we are at the point where we are scaling with capital does that answer your question Thomas yeah that's helpful and then um I remember first we spoke you had a couple other crops, uh, plants mm -hmm. in development. Um, mm -hmm. I know, I know, vanilla is huge. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about kind of the pipeline? Um, sure. And what needs uh, to be through to, to have kind of a a portfolio of of uh, of plants? Sure. I mean, as I was saying, I mean, these are the initial plants that we are focusing on. Like saffron and salep are there for sure. Uh, vanilla is the next space that we want to work on. But otherwise, as I was saying, I mean, we produce this and like send this uh, to. Uh, to the customer so they are uh, looking at it and we will produce it for them at scale and the other one is like horsetail and stevia i mean like this those are the things that we are looking at with martin bar so i mean like as i said we are a small company we don't want to diverge too much so we want to have like more focus than like looking at a lot of things but once we have those we will be growing on top of those I and mean, we will be like trying different plants on top of those but Got these it. are the initial plants that we are looking at and can you can you talk a little bit more about kind of some of your partners or potential partners reasons for partnering with you? I know some you mentioned you alluded to the fact that some of these supply chains are problematic. 
Mm -hmm. I think that's that's very interesting. And um, I guess in talking about that, it'd be also interesting to hear kind of the sales cycle and what proof points some of your partners are looking for uh, sure. in order to, to partner with you. I mean, just, just let me start with Saleh, for example. As I said, I mean, Saleh is a specific uh, product for this region, uh, but it's used in like ice creams uh, and like hot beverages, as I was saying. So the problem is Saleh, is, I mean, there are two issues with Saleh. The first one is there's a lot of fake products uh, in the market. So, I mean, like the thing that you're getting at Saleh, most of them is like uh, fakes. I mean, they're they putting starch in there and like even like <laughs> spaghetti and like stuff like that. So they cannot find enough product and the pro- product is not like uh, high quality. The quality is very, very low. So what we did with like uh, with Saleh, for example, was we uh, developed the product. We sent it to the lab for like metabolite uh, analysis. And on top of that, we sent it to the lab for microbiotics uh, analysis. And all of them were like really, really high quality. I mean, our viscosity levels were very high and there was like almost like no microbiology um, on our side. So that's why they like our product uh, compared to everyone else. And that's why they want to like talk about like uh, procurement. The idea is, I mean, we can tell them that I will give you like this much of Saleb every month for the next 10 years with this price. I can fix those without any issues, without any diseases, without any microbial content. So that's what they like about. And like with Saffron, the main issue is like constant supply shocks, as I was saying. Like last year, for example, I was talking to Red Ruby Norway, which is like one of the biggest producers. And they were saying like there was too much rain in the Horasan region. So like they they lost about like 30% of their crops. And this year, as I was saying, there's an issue with Kashmir and there was too much rain and they're losing crops. I mean, like, so we are also solving that. We are just like, we are giving them consistency more than anything. That's what they like. Same with Martin Barr, like with, for example, Horsetail, uh, this uh, plant that we are looking at with Martin Barr, there are two types which are like looking almost exactly the same from a phenotype uh, point of view. So you cannot distinguish them with art, like with looking at them, you have to send them to the lab. One of them is poisonous, the other one is used in herbal tea, for example, right? So we can guarantee the content and like the quality of content and the supply of the plant. So that's what they like about uh, working with us. So we can like uh, give them guarantees around that. Got it. That's very helpful. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And price, of course, I mean, Tom, it always comes back. Of course. It always comes back to price. I mean, like, as I said, people talk about sustainability, quality, and all that, but I mean, it always comes back to price. You have to be like uh, at the competitive price level. Of course. Great. Well, uh, Okan, if there are no other questions, uh, I, you know, I'd like to end on how can the audience here help you, uh, both the the active members listening live and those who will listen uh, after the fact, um, how can they help you and how can they get in touch with you? Uh, so, I mean, like, uh, I'm not sure if you're sharing the contact information. I mean, like, uh, I have the email at the end, uh, but in terms of how we are looking for partners, uh, we're always looking for partners. I mean, so when we talk to a potential customer, the first question we ask is, uh, give me your week, give me your, like, uh, this is what we are saying. I mean, what are the biggest issues that you're having in terms of procurement? And for any plant that they cannot find, we will be happy to like initiate a conversation with them. I mean, like the way we work is uh, we are asking them what are like the problematic plants that they are having in terms of like procurement. And we do a test run with them. We send the results to them. If they like them, then we kind of like grow the relationship with them. It takes time, of course. So anyone like who is having those issues, we would be happy to talk with right now. Great. Well, thank you, Okan, for joining us today. Congratulations on all your progress to date. Thanks, Tom. Uh, I'd like to also thank the audience for their active participation. Uh, As a reminder, we host Agri-Food Conversations every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central. If you want to share this with a friend, we welcome you to do so. Uh, A replay of uh, this this webinar will be emailed to you in the next 24 hours, and feel free to forward that along, and they can register. Um, So again, thank you, Okan, and thank you to our participants this afternoon, and hopefully we will see you next week. Thanks again. Bye-bye.